When you realize that academic criticism is coming your way, the one thing that you should do immediately is listen. Just listen to what the person has to say. Now, I've got to say that this is not my natural kind of default position. I want to say, yeah, but, and also you're this way. Like when I get those sort of like bubblings of ad adrenaline or I feel like I'm hard done by or the criticism is unfair, I want to attack back. Unfortunately, that gets the meeting nowhere and you end up kind of damaging whatever relationship you can build in the short term, definitely, but maybe in the long term, if this goes on long enough, and I think that was my biggest issue when I was a PhD student. Really kind of understanding that the words that they are saying are just words and that you are putting your own kind of lens on those words. So the person is really, hopefully, if it's constructive criticism, trying to give you valuable information that you can act on. If it's not constructive, it's just mean. But unfortunately, no matter what type of criticism it is, those are just words. It's when you interpret them in a certain way that they can become toxic to yourself. You know, once you uh, think that someone's out to get you or that they're kind of trying to be mean to you, it will shut down communication, it will make you feel bad, it will set off those spiral of negative thoughts in your mind. So really, the first step is listen. Listen to the words and try not to put any intention on the words yet. We can think about that later, but do not let those defensive mechanisms rise up. Throughout my whole time as a postdoc, um, in my own career as, you know, when I had my own money as a researcher, and also as a startup founder, I had loads of people giving me their advice, giving me their criticisms. And one thing I learned is to be a really good sort of apprentice uh, to that information. Sit and listen and just take notes. Like one of the things I really like to do is make sure I've got a piece of paper and a pen right near me and I just take notes and I write down the facts, not how I'm feeling, but what they have said. That allows me to gather all the information because it's just data and then it allows me to act on it in the future. Now I'm gonna share with you some little mind hacks that you can use to make sure that criticism doesn't really hurt you deep, deep deep down, which it can sometimes. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract, the perfect daily schedule, and more. It's exclusive content only available for free, so go sign up now. This alien says do it. Once you've collected all of the data from the criticism that is coming your way, you've really got to kind of work out what is true and what is false. And the hard thing at this point is trying to see what is coming at you, the data you've just collected from the criticism as um, true, because sometimes the truth hurts. Now, when you're kind of like receiving the information, everything feels like an attack. And if it starts to feel like an attack, you really have to dig a little deeper because if something really is a little bit true, at least in your sort of like own perception of things, then it can have a little bit of a sting behind it. And you've got to find those little moments of sting. The goal here is to identify your mistakes or your shortcomings as exactly those, as non-permanent, as temporary sort of like situations that you found yourself in. Remember that failure and the state that you're in at the moment isn't permanent. It's only permanent if you choose to do nothing about it. It. So seeing criticism as a useful tool for pushing you out of a rut, for pushing you into a new area, for helping you overcome your own shortcomings is exactly how you should interpret these little stings as you're analyzing the information that came at you through what you considered criticism. The person that's giving you criticism is either right or wrong. If they're right, you should thank them and say, well, actually, yeah, I didn't really see that about myself. And also, yeah, I agree too. Maybe there's these areas that I can explore in the research or yeah, there's always this stuff that I always sort of like gloss over. So I'm gonna spend a bit more time doing that thing. And you should be thanking them and say, thanks very much, mate. Um, this is valuable information or it's false. If it is false, you can ignore it. If it is objectively or even kind of subjectively in your mind at that time, absolutely false. 
it is either there to only make you feel bad, in which you can ask someone, well, why do you want to make me feel bad? And that is quite often a nice way to kind of diffuse any situation because they, the person probably doesn't realize they're making you feel bad. Um, and if it's just outright false, you can also just ignore it. Pack it up in that little box and put it in the bin in your mind. So yeah, separate truth from the, from the false information and uh, I think that is probably the second most important thing you can do when receiving criticism. There's actually this really cool paper that I found from the University of Florida. Let's take a look at it now. So it talks about working with others and coping with criticism. So really, the one thing I wanna point out is here it tells you how you should kind of cope with criticism, but importantly, it's got some really good kind of like uh, actionable steps you can take. And one of the things I really like, if you can't listen, if you need to say something, is, you know, is talking about distraction, these distraction techniques. So here, technique number one, distraction and this technique should be used when there is no truth to the criticism we just talked about true or false and so really this is about sort of uh, stopping the criticism as soon as possible because you've realized it's not actually constructive it's just a little bit mean so here um, they go through blah all that sort of stuff but little examples like if someone says uh, you are always late you could say perhaps I'm a little bit late this time, or every time I tell you about a mistake, you get defensive and you're like, you might be right. I don't like to find mistakes either. So having a look at this paper and uh, just sort of like looking at the different ways that you can distract the criticism is one way of handling criticism that is not constructive. If you find yourself unable to listen, if you are not able to kind of like uh, see the truth in what they're saying, distraction is a really sort of valuable valuable um, sort of grenade in your um, arsenal of weapons against this sort of interaction. Remember that criticism comes from the outside in. And unfortunately, sometimes we are very happy with where we are at right now. Don't, don't get me wrong, in a PhD, when you look back at like a year ago, two years ago, you are always, or you should be, I think, embarrassed about what you've been able to achieve. These videos, my YouTube channel, the information I've given, if you don't look back and see it is a little bit cringy or wrong, Wrong, then you're not really making progress. You're not getting better. So remember that these people are looking at you through a whole different lens that you're looking at yourself. But importantly with criticism, it's important to kind of like have a look to see if you are happy with your progress. If you are happy with what you're doing at that time and uh, you feel like the criticism is something that uh, is more of a distraction at the moment than uh, what you've got planned, then that's also perfectly okay the happiness with your own progress is going to be the motivator that keeps you chugging forward. I don't find it useful when someone's behind me going like, this is wrong and this is wrong. I find that completely demotivational. Whereas some of my students that I've had when we've had sort of like difficult meetings with other supervisors, they've been sort of like riled up by it and been like, yeah, let's do this. Whereas I'm like, no, F them. I am not doing anything they say. And I get my wall up and super defensive. Are you happy with where you're going? Are you hitting the milestones you've set for yourself, that is one way to deal with criticism. One of the things that I do to handle criticism is I look for the outcomes. I look for what is next. It's a really easy way to look at constructive criticism or destructive and horrible criticism and just outright nastiness, which can happen in academia. Um, it happens far too often in my opinion, but here we go. All you have to do is look for the specific outcome. If someone is giving you criticism and you do not see what they are telling you to do as an action, you need to ask for the specifics because that's what turns criticism into constructive criticism. Even afterwards, if you have to go back with your little sheet of data that you've been taking as they've been sort of blasting this information at you, you can go through and be like, okay, what would be the outcome of that bit of information? If there's nothing in that, you can get rid of it, you can discard it because it was just really meant to hurt your feelings or for them to sort of like blow off some steam in a certain way. So ask ask for specific outcomes for the stuff they are saying. I always stop supervisors when, I, when they're sort of like talking to me and I go, look, what should we do to tackle that? 
specifically? Tell me what you would like. How can we resolve this? If there's no resolution in their mind at the moment, then you can go away and think about it. But uh, ultimately, look for specific actions. Otherwise, you can dismiss it as just criticism and not constructive criticism. And feel free to go back and ask questions. Sometimes at the end of a meeting where I felt like I was a little bit hard done by, I would go through and I would write an email back to the people that were there and I'll say, well, this was said, so this is the outcome. This was said and this is what I should do. This is said and uh, these are the people that I need to sort of, sort of support me to get this action done. So look for actions in the criticism and uh, that will help you sort of like turn it and yeah, really kind of build it up into something that is genuinely constructive to your PhD, your research, your master's, whatever academic endeavor you are going through at the time. So there we have it. There's everything you need to know about handling constructive criticism in academia gracefully and also just to, you know, just to make sure that it doesn't shut down your communication, doesn't make you feel bad. It's not meant to be sort of there to make you feel bad. Go check out that paper that I recommended. The link is in the description. And also let me know in the comments, what do you do to really get around those feelings of being hard done by if someone's just sort of blasting this cr criticism at you that at the time you just feel is a little bit uncalled for. Let me know. And also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. I've also got my Insider Forum uh, and I'll see you in the next video.